Now this is a gun that was introduced in 2014, but we're finally getting around to reviewing it. The pistol, of course, is the Remington R51. This is a gun built using the Pedersen Hesitation Lock. It was one of the first new pistols from Remington in some time. Of course, they're in the 1911 business and they since introduced the RP pistol, but this is a legacy product for Remington. The Model 51 was really one of the finest guns designed by John D. Pedersen. They spent a lot of time back when they introduced this gun getting the ergonomics just right. It was a gun that pointed very, very naturally. So when Remington decided to do an all new pistol, they decided to use the Pedersen Hesitation Lock. Inside the slide is a separate breech bolt. Now most pistols these days have it machined integrally with the slide. Not so on the Model 51 and not so on the R51. As the slide starts to move rearward, that breech block hits some cam surfaces inside the slide and it actually locks at about 0.80. This thing is completely locked. It's locked up tighter than a drum. But as the slide continues rearward, it uses those cam surfaces to move the Pedersen breech block out of the way. It goes back and then it goes forward. Many people who own this gun don't even know that. So the basics on this gun, it has an aluminum frame and a steel slide and of course a steel barrel. Uh, the trigger is a single action trigger. It's really got an internal hammer inside there. You can't see it, so it's nice and smooth. It's not gonna catch on anything, but this is actually a pretty good single action trigger pull. Again, even though the blade itself is made out of polymer. Safety systems on this gun include a pacifiering pin safety, but there's also a grip safety on the back. This gun can be manipulated with the grip safety in place, but if the grip safety isn't depressed, it can't fire. The gun comes standard with three dot sights. Uh, they are dovetailed in, so if you wanna back out your set screw, you can adjust them uh, for windage. You'll notice that here on the front, there is a flat surface here that allows the gun to be cocked uh, against a hard surface in the event that your weak hand is disabled. Now, why use a Pedersen hesitation lock in the first place? Well, what it does is it eliminates the height in the gun that's necessary uh, for a swinging link or a traditional uh, browning style recoil operated gun. Nothing's moving up and down on this gun except the block. The barrel stays fixed during the cycle of operation. So this allows the gun to have a low bore axis. Now this gun, of course, was introduced back in 2014. The gun had some issues in production. Remington, frankly, had tool room guns that worked really well, but not so much when they released the gun for distribution. It took Remington's engineers some time to get this gun right, but when they re-released it, this gun was right. I fired more than 2,000 rounds through this gun without any major stoppage. This is a gun that had a very troubled start, but I think has a very promising future. For more reviews of firearms and shooting gear, check out the latest edition of American Rifleman the magazine.